lot of families get together to celebrate Easter, but at the Tennessee home of Linda Rose, the family gathering itself is a miracle to celebrate. Linda just reunited with the daughter she gave birth to at age 17, Jennifer Lynn. My daughter is a product of a first love. Father placed the child up for adoption against her will. Linda spent 31 years searching. Until a month ago, she found Jennifer, a hairstylist living in California with her 11-year-old daughter, Felicia. She was telling me, I never wanted to give you up for adoption. I was forced to do it. Jennifer had been adopted by Phil and Roz Shapiro and raised with two older brothers in Southern California. She'd had a happy childhood and says the Shapiros are an extraordinary family. But she was always curious about her birth parents. So when Linda found her, she flew to Knoxville for the reunion. <laughs> but it's not over yet. Now starts the journey to her dad. Jennifer's birth father was Linda's first love, Christopher Kreider. As teens, they'd planned to be together and take care of their baby. When the pregnancy was discovered, they were separated by their parents, and they haven't seen each other in 31 years. I loved him very much. I would say he was my first boyfriend, my first love. Chris has never met his birth daughter, Jennifer, but he will now because Linda found him with the help of his sister, Jenny. He's a musician living in Macon, Georgia, and now he's driving to Knoxville with his wife and son for this family reunion. They'll be here tomorrow. Wow. You meet Aunt Jennifer before you meet um, your dad. But first, Chris's younger sister, Jenny, arrives. When she was just 12, Jenny Kreider was looking forward to being the aunt to her brother's new baby. And when the baby was taken away, she was devastated. She's thought of her long-lost niece for 31 years, and now they'll meet on this special Easter weekend in Tennessee. There is not a word in the English language that can describe this. It's just wonderful. The best Easter ever. My name's Linda Ellen Mortimer Rose, and I was just reunited with my birth daughter after nearly 32 years. Today, the day starts where Everyone goes, oh, she looks like you, she this and that and this and that. And now her Aunt Jennifer comes today, and then her dad comes, and now the other half of the family comes in, you know, and I get to watch this. And I know all the cast of characters. My name is Jennifer Eden. This is my husband, Eric. This is our youngest son, Andrew. He's the youngest of five children. Jenny, uh, this is Chris's younger sister. She's the middle child. And Jenny has always been such a special. To a point where I can openly say that, refer to her as my niece. There has never been a time that I haven't been aware of her presence. I was going to be her sister-in-law, you know, Chris and Linda, Linda and Chris. And then when we got pregnant, I was like, I'm going to be an aunt. Well, she's never stopped being an aunt ever. I think her whole life has always been um, characterized by wanting that child. Jenny said and told Jennifer this and told me this. When they took her away from you, they took her away from everybody. I wanted to give my love to my aunt because I was taken away from her too. I stay in touch with her periodically, and it's always been because of Chris. And just this, is he okay? Is he live? Is he out there? It's been quite a while since I've seen Jenny, though. It's been about 13 years. I really feel like my prayers have been answered. One of the greatest blessings of my life is to be here this weekend and have my brother here to be part of it as well. After our mother died in 77, I really didn't have contact with my own brother even. And I really just want to be able to come to this out of a place of joy for what lies ahead of us now 
and not think about the loss. It's, it's been a lot of years that have been marked by blighted relationships. because of some of those decisions that were made three decades ago. Hey, if you want me to come and get close, you gotta call off the dogs. <laughs> I think she found you. Oh, you wait. She can't, she's going to bolt out the door. All right. You go, All I'm right. going this All way. Right. All right. You get hugs here, that's the All way right. it goes. Oh God, Eric. Where are you going? <laughs> oh my gosh. You look just like your mom. <laughs> oh God. It was just an intense, immediate connection with Jennifer. Another time that I felt like that was when my granddaughter was born. <laughs> I've had my own little babies, and to be able to have been with you. It's just embracing the being, you know? There, I don't have to know anything at all about her, and there's this, this bond that's just there. What I want to do is I want to say goodbye to the loss because we Look have today. <laughs> it validated me. You know, it validated me. She's history. She knows that mine and Christopher's history, that uh, my daughter, Christopher's daughter, is a product of our love and caring, nothing wrong. It's just amazing. <laughs> I have an incredible aunt. This is my life. This is it. This is where I come from. It's just... And today, to see the relatedness, to fill spaces that have need be, needed healing for years, for 31 years, is more than anybody could ever dream.
That package was supposed to be here today. It might be in the mailbox. I knew that Christopher was going to send the package up. And um, it dawned on me, oh my god, your father's things have to be here. It's here, oh my god, it's here. Oh my god, he sent me something. I felt like that night of the Oscars, that woman was in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, let's see what it is. <gasps> it's his music! <gasps> oh my god! Cool! Ooh. Oh wow. He's a guitarist in a band called Big, Big Mike and the Blue Papas. Papas. <laughs> Look at that red, hot blues. Oh, hey, open that up. Daddy plays. And well, that's how long. Come on over here, baby. Oh my god. I need to talk to you about all that oh, mess around. Everybody know. Look at this. Oh, Jim. For the first time, both of us, we get to see him to look at from his little picture that I have of all whited out and just making the definition and seeing his eyes and his smile and everything about him is the same, but just a little grayer, a little rounder. Lord God, what happened here? <laughs> I know it brought her back to sitting in the basement listening to him play guitar when they were just teenagers. We got to listen to his music and her open it up and now starts the journey to her dad. This is your dad. This is right, right before I met him. There was a little teen club at the elementary school at Adelphi. And you could go dance to the 45s. I can remember what I had on. I had black slingshot shoes on, black tight skirt, and a red sweater, and Maybelline eyeliner on, and I was you know, I'm dancing. This is the strong, young, independent man <laughs> that I saw come walking in teen club that night. He asked me to slow dance. That was my very first slow dance. I don't know if Christopher ever knew that. I was telling him, I met this most amazing guy, <laughs> and he likes me. <laughs> you know? That's the best part. That's... And he likes me. <laughs> who, knows, who cares if he's amazing, but he likes me. Yes. And he said, um, how about if I walk you home? And he just talked, and we got to my house, and there wasn't anybody home. But I knew that I wasn't allowed out, and I knew I didn't dare have anybody in, you know. Um, and so I, I closed the, the storm door, and I sat like in, sat cross-legged on this side of the storm door, and Chris sat on that side of the storm door. So, you know, technically, I was in, no one was in, <laughs> you know. And we just talked, and he pulled out a harmonica. It was such a special moment for a young girl. And he was all that was so wonderful in a terrible life. I had lost my mom. My brother wasn't home. He was overseas. One thing led to another. And, you know, the inevitable happened. And we were pregnant. My father thought Chris did this to me. Chris corrupted me. He did this to me. And I knew he was hearing the same thing at his house. I did this to Chris. Did what? What did I do? I loved him. What did he do? He loved me. I very clearly remember standing in the picture window of my house. And I was about five, five and a half months pregnant. And I saw Christopher. And he was just walking by. I do remember saying, there goes your daddy, baby. You don't know how bad I just wanted to bolt out of that house. The times were so different. 
it was announced to me that I was being sent away to an unwed mother's home, you know, because back then you were, you were called a bad girl and uh, your children were called illegitimate and bastards. And uh, I didn't know what happened to Chris. He assumed that I got shipped off to my grandfather's. But I never once thought Chris abandoned me. I didn't ever think that. I have an understanding that this is something he and I are going to lose. This is something he and I aren't strong enough to. They're just going to do this to us, and we can't help this. It's been 30 years since I've seen Christopher. And tomorrow, he's here, and the circle's complete. When I thought of my father, I never really had fantasies about who he was in life. I think it was more societal, you know, like society conditioning you to think of your mom and the father is over there or somewhere. He never saw you. He told me, you know, he, that's, he said so much on the phone to me. He said, I never saw her. I never got to see her. I never saw a picture of her. I never saw her. And he's never, ever seen me until I've sent him pictures of who I am. And I just can't wait to just hug him, just be that little girl, and just go right there. I'm on edge. I'm on edge. OK, so if they left the house at 3, mm -hmm. it only takes four hours to get here. Okay. Four, five, six, seven. Come on. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. My name is Chris Kreider I'm from Macon, Georgia. I'm headed to uh, meet uh, a 31-year-old daughter that I've never seen, the name of Jennifer Lynn Page. It's just a welcome reawakening. And uh, uh, like a dream kind of come true that, that I would ever even have the opportunity to meet, meet up with her. And it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Just now starting to really kind of feel uh, some stuff going on, the adrenaline's starting to flow now because I'm almost here. Let's do it.
I'm going to meet my father in about, hopefully, two minutes. I'm praying for that two minutes to come now. Happy Easter Lady. Oh. feel my heart kind of racing now. I'll calm down a little bit. He's a very real person. He's not, uh, he's in touch with his sensitive side, so to speak. He's got a good family. His wife's very, very sweet to allow this freedom and without question. She has supported me from the day that we knew this was all going to happen. <laughs> Uh, I'm here. You're gonna meet your granddaughter. Yeah. Felicia, yeah. up! Come here, everybody. The circle's complete. This is Chris. This is your granddaughter. Hey. Come here. Happy Easter. Yeah. Oh, no. God. How you doing, baby? Family reunion. All right. Seeing Jennifer is like seeing a whole lot of things in my life and uh, a lot of things coming together. She looks like my mom. She looks like my aunt. And it's, uh, it was just faces I haven't seen for a long time. And uh, it's really good, really good. I, mean, I just like, there's no words that can come out of my mouth really not much to say, but we'll make, we'll, we'll <laughs> work a dialogue, <laughs> we'll work a dialogue in here, you know? It's just a warm, warm feeling. I'd like to have that feeling every day.
But I'm sitting on the porch with my dad. I know. <laughs> it's beyond elation. It's rea it's rapture. It's completeness. It's it is everything about family, everything and love. Just looking at you and talking with you, the short time we talked on the phone and stuff. Uh, you know, I'm real thankful for your mom and dad. You know. Oh, God bless them. And uh, I mean, you just sound so great. And I love you. I'm hoping that our daughter, Chris, Linda, and the Shapiros, and our granddaughter, Chris, Linda, and the Shapiros, can move on and be whole and happy. I told her she can't have too many moms and dads mm -hmm. and brothers and sisters and grandmas and granddads and... Not in this lifetime. I mm -hmm. have it all. Jennifer is just so sweet, got such a big heart to let this come about. That's, that's just a great thing. Just, I, I, well, I can't look too long at any one time right now, you know? But it makes me feel good. It's kind of hard to, you know, put into words, you know, all your th thoughts and feelings at one time. To have this much joy, to have this much bliss and this much love, in everyone's heart, in everyone's heart. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And even the people that are looking down right now are here right now. <laughs> For everyone. <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> if anybody has not been in touch with their families. Uh, like, for many years, I haven't been in touch with my family. Uh, and things are now coming together for me in my life. You need, need to call home, hey? Tell somebody you love them. Because love's where it's at. There ain't nothing else about anything except love. There's a bunch of it here today.